just the mailman. Junk. 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 Hmm. What is this? Two ten fingers. Hmm. There's a note. You have 24 minutes to make a wagon wheel. Huh. Challenge on. I have been asked by a Richard of all trades to create a wheel for a penny farthing out of wood. I received the steel hoop and the rest is up to me. I am not a wheelwright and I surely hope I can pull this off. Actually, I hope you kept the mystery alive by not looking at the thumbnail when starting this video. A Richard of all trades is a pretty heavy guy, so I figured 16 spokes would probably do the trick. It's probably way too many and way too heavy, but let's go for it anyways. Each spoke needed to be cut at 11 and a quarter degrees. I first tried using a compass and realized that wasn't going to work and it wasn't precise enough. So then I created a storyboard of sorts by using math skills that I had long forgotten. My high school days, I would say that I would never use this. Well, here I am 30 years later using these skills. With this board, I'm able to lay the spoke up against this and have a terminus point of the angle. Knowing where the halfway point is on the end of the board, I'm able to just draw out the position. This was way better than I had imagined it would be. I created this very large compass with a three quarter inch dowel that fits perfectly in my dowel holes. With this compass, I could make the rim pieces outside diameter perfectly.
I'm gonna basically make a sandwich of rim pieces and spokes. So I'm here I'm making a dado to accept each spoke, which will have a tenon cut into each. Once I get each of the rim pieces rough cut on the bandsaw, I use a router with the flush trim bit and make them all uniform. This little jig that I created here helps quite a bit. Now let's make sure all this hard work is going to actually fit. This is the best I could come up for drilling holes in this quarter inch steel hoop that is way too tall for our, my drill press. Setting the drill press on the bench was kind of sketchy and heavy, but it ended up working just fine. And I'm glad that that project is over. I really like this screen and screen effect for my movie editor that I just discovered. I wonder what other neat effects I could figure out. Hmm.
The sandwiched rim pieces are three quarters of an inch thick each. And that makes one and a half inch with the glue up. And the steel rim itself is one inch. So that leaves a quarter inch on either side that I need. This steel plate I'm hitting with a hammer is one quarter inch also. So therefore I'm able to center it very nicely. I tried getting a die grinder shaping tool, but I had a hard time getting one in time. So I'm using these flap disc sanding discs for my die grinder that I got at the orange box store. This took a while and it was a bit of effort, but it came out all right. Now it's time to make the hub. What I'm gonna do here is make a segmented piece with eight triangles to fit over the center. Hopefully this will reduce wood movement as much as possible and it will look kind of nice too. I'm refining the shape of each one before glue up. I glued up the four hemispheres first, and then I was able to sand the hemispheres flat and then glue those together. That worked out rather well, and uh, I'll be using that technique again someday. I don't show it here, but I ended up sanding the two hemispheres of each hub together on the sander. That way, if I have an error in my angle in 90 degrees, then they match up. First, I'm taking the center of the wheel so that I can get the hub as close to center as possible. Then I glued on each side and let each side dry. I don't show it in this video, but the center of the wheel is, has a gap that's a little larger than three quarters of an inch. So what I ended up doing was filling that with a epoxy slash sawdust mixture to make sure that I had a nice solid center of the wheel. Did the epoxy after the first side had dried, but before I put on the second side. If I did after the second side, it would have been pretty hard to put in there. Just saying.
So, how much does this thing weigh? 45 pounds. Wow. Finally, just remember, after every woodworking project, you should always count your fingers. You end with 10. Good job. So, how am I going to ship this back to them? Hmm. It won't fit in there. Hmm. Maybe a bigger envelope. And really, how many first class stamps will